Welcome to Gender Queer Atheist News, a sampling of the daily Gender Queer Atheist Reader. You are welcome to join Gender Queer Atheists on Facebook. Subscribe to Gender Queer Atheists on YouTube. Network with us at Gender Queer Atheist on Atheist Nexus. Links are available in the description below this video. Analytic thinking can decrease religious belief, study shows. This is from Science Daily. A new University of British Columbia study finds that analytic thinking can decrease religious belief even in devout believers. The study finds that thinking analytically decreases belief among believers and skeptics alike, shedding important new light on the psychology of religious belief. Our goal was to explore the fundamental question of why people believe in a God to different degrees, says lead author Will Jarvis, a PhD student in UBC's Department of Psychology. A combination of complex factors influence matters of personal spirituality, and these new findings suggest that the cognitive system related to analytic thoughts is one of the factors that can influence disbelief. Our study builds on previous research that links religious beliefs to intuitive thinking, says study co-author and associate professor Ara Norenzian. UBC Department of Psychology. Our findings suggest that activating the analytic cognitive system in the brain can undermine the intuitive support for religious beliefs, at least temporarily. The study involved more than 650 participants in the USA and Canada. Jarvis says future studies will explore whether the increase in religious disbelief is temporary or long-lasting and how the findings apply to non-Western cultures. Recent figures suggest that the majority of the world's population believes in a god. However, atheists and agnostics number in the hundreds of millions, says Noren Zion, a co-director of UBC's Center for Human Evolution, Cognition, and Culture. Religious beliefs are shaped by psychological and cultural factors and fluctuate across time and situations, he said. <laughs> Sam Killerman is the creator of The Genderbred Person. He has recently upgraded and updated it and has posted information about his decisions on his website. Sam wants to see this model replace all instances of the old one. He states that it's more accurate, more inclusive, and still just as accessible, adorable. He calls it the Ness model. Sam sees this model as more accurate. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus is a funny expression and scientifically dubious, but it actually nails down the strength of this model. Two planets, not poles of one planet. Placing man, masculine, male on one end of something, continuum, 2D, plot, etc., and woman, feminine, female on the other, as in the old model, creates and reinforces a fallacy central to gender misunderstanding. To be more of one, you need to be less of the other. That's incorrect. You can have both. You can have your gender bread and eat it too. He continues, This model allows one to define gender in a way that accounts for varying intensities of ness. Identifying with aspects of femininity doesn't make you less masculine. It makes you more feminine. To understand gender, and in turn create a safer place for people of all genders, we need to realize that feminine and masculine aren't in a tug-of-war. They're separate arenas. Sam finds this model more inclusive. What was lacking in the old gender-bred person was the ability to define intensities of identification, or the amount of ness one possesses. 
Let's take attraction, for example. We know that most people aren't 100% straight or gay. A continuum of gay to straight leaves us with bi in the middle. What about folks who are pansexual, asexual, mostly asexual, hypersexual? None of those identities can be mapped out on the old model. The amount of ness is, in many cases, as crucial to one's identity as which ness they possess. A man who is hypersexually attracted to women and a man who is attracted to women both may identify as straight, but there is no question they are two different men. Sam worked to make the new model just as adorable. While this one is a bit harder to understand at first glance, mostly due to the fact that we're using a method we created instead of a standard graph, most people in our test group got it. So that's good. It's an introduction after all, and we know how important introductions are. Sam asks, what do you think? Did we nail it? Are there a few tweaks you'd recommend? Or did I fall flat on my face so hard I jumbled my brain and am now incapable of realizing how far off this is from good? Thanks for listening to Gender Queer Atheist News, a sampling of the daily Gender Queer Atheist Reader. You are welcome to join us on Gender Queer Atheists on Facebook, subscribe to Gender Queer Atheist YouTube, and network with us at Gender Queer Atheists on Atheist Nexus. Links are available in the description below this video. Music by Kevin McLeod. I'm Rogie Riverstone.